Let's talk about Tesla's full self-driving beta and how anyone who has purchased the FSD package will soon be able to download this update to their car. Also, the long-awaited FSD subscription model is right around the corner, which will make Tesla's full self-driving software more financially accessible to the entire fleet of Tesla vehicles. However, Elon has consistently reiterated that purchasing the FSD package outright will be a better deal long-term compared to the subscription model. Today, I will be discussing how those who have purchased FSD can sign up to download the beta, and I will also be digging into the numbers to figure out whether purchasing FSD outright or going with the subscription model is the better way to go for your individual situation. First, I want to say that this video really took a lot of time and effort to create. So if you could give it a like and subscribe to my channel, it would help me out a lot. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the video. Tesla's full self-driving beta, the version of the software that can drive the car fully autonomously in all situations, including responding to stoplights and stop signs on city streets, has only been available to a small group of beta testers for the last four months or so. On the 2020 Q4 earnings call, Elon said they had around 1,000 people testing the software. Many videos have been uploaded to the internet showcasing the incredible capabilities of the FSD beta, and as such, the interest in becoming a part of the beta testing group has grown immensely. Ever since the beta was introduced to this small group, there has not been much guidance on when the beta testing group would expand. That is, until a few days ago. Elon recently took to Twitter to announce the expansion of the beta, saying, quote, If you want the Tesla full self-driving beta downloaded to your car, let us know. Doubling beta program size now with 8.2 and probably 10x size with 8.3. Still be careful, but it's getting mature. With Elon having nearly 50 million Twitter followers, you can imagine that the vague instructions of let us know was really not useful at all. And what followed was a barrage of tweets at both Elon and Andre Karpathy, the leader of the autopilot neural network team at Tesla, asking to be added to the beta testing group. This resulted in Andre tweeting, quote, Yes, excited and working hard to grow the full self-driving beta regarding Elon's tweet last night. I do not directly manage the invites. Please email earlyaccess at tesla.com, which we are using to coordinate the program. Again, you can imagine how this email inbox was inundated with people asking to be added to the beta. Overflowing this inbox is not good for the autopilot team, as this inbox is where beta testers have been directed to send important feedback from their testing of the software. So, as a response to this inbox being flooded with requests, Elon tweeted again saying, quote, due to high levels of demand for FSD beta, adding download beta button to service section of car display in about 10 days. It was unclear exactly what would happen if you toggle this button, but Elon gave some clarity to this. User at whole Mars blog asked, quote, Elon, what does the download FSD button do? Does it put you in the queue to get FSD beta or download it immediately for anyone who has FSD and wants to try it. Elon replied, quote, assuming user approves warning and agrees to drive carefully, it will download latest QA tested FSD beta build as soon as car connects to Wi-Fi. Elon further clarified the timing on when the download beta button will appear, saying, quote, build 8.3 of FSD should be done QA testing by end of next week. So that's roughly when download button should show up. Keep in mind that all these tweets happened in the first and second weeks of March. So this puts these release dates roughly around the last week of March or first week of April. Now let's dig into the pricing of FSD and why the subscription option may or may not be the way to go. Currently, purchasing the FSD package costs $10,000. Rolling that cost into a loan at the estimated rate that Tesla shows of 2.49% would result in a payment of $177 per month for a 60-month loan or $150 per month for a 72-month loan. In July of 2020, Car and Driver reported that the average length of time that car owners keep a new car is approximately 71.4 months or right around six years. This shows that a five to six year loan is a good estimate to go off of for the purpose of this analysis. Last week, Elon tweeted that the subscription will be available in Q2 for sure, but we still have not gotten any hints from Tesla as to what the price of the subscription will be. All Elon has said is that purchasing FSD outright will be a better long-term deal than the subscription option. Electrek has reported that the subscription service is expected to cost over $100 per month, and Rob Maurer from the Tesla Daily Podcast recently estimated that it will cost $200 per month. I agree with Rob's estimation here. Remember that the 60 and 72 month loan payment for the current $10,000 lump sum price tag of FSD comes out to $177 or $150, respectively. This is less than the estimated $200 per month for the subscription, making it a better deal to purchase FSD outright, as Elon has said. However, it will really boil down to each individual circumstance as to which will be a better deal. 
Here are some key factors to consider. If you don't plan to keep your Tesla for the entire length of your loan, then buying outright does not make sense for a couple reasons. First, there is no evidence that Tesla considers the value of FSD if you are to trade in your vehicle to them. This fact has angered owners and really makes no sense. Elon confirmed on Twitter that this shouldn't be the case, replying to one user who paid for FSD on his Model 3, but wanted to upgrade to a Model Y a few months later. Tesla told him that they would not include any credit in his trade-in value for the FSD he had purchased only three months prior. Elon replied, quote, Looking into this, no question that FSD should be viewed as reasonably valuable when doing a trade-in. So Tesla is apparently looking into changing this, but like I said, there is no evidence that any change here has actually been made. Second, the generic consumer automotive market is definitely not considering FSD to be of any value. Using Kelly Blue Book, I priced the same 2019 long range dual motor Model 3 with and without FSD. And the difference in value for both private party sales and dealership trade in value was only $500 to $600, as you can see in these screenshots here. Notice how for the non-FSD car, Kelly Blue Book gives a value of about $37,500 for a trade-in and $41,300 for a private party sale. For the car with FSD, these values only increase to about $38,000 for a trade-in and $41,900 for private party, or only $500 to $600. So in reality, the only place to currently get some value for your FSD package is to sell to a private party who understands Tesla enough to recognize the value of FSD against the current price that Tesla is offering it for. Another thing to think about is how often you will actually use the full self-driving package. At this point in time, FSD is only level two autonomy, which means you are still required to be paying attention and ready to take over at all times. So if you still have to be paying attention, why not just drive the car yourself? Now, I will be the first to admit that I would really enjoy using FSD simply because the technology fascinates me, and maybe that enjoyment alone is worth the price tag to some people. I also understand that although you still have to be ready to take over at any time, level 2 autonomy takes a lot of the stress out of driving. But I think that the city streets functionality, although it is incredibly impressive in its current state, is still pretty raw and requires very close attention. Basically, the same attention required to simply drive the car yourself. Navigate on autopilot on the highway, however, seems to be very mature in its abilities and really can lessen the driving stress of a road trip. In the end, in order to make the decision to either purchase FSD outright or use the subscription model, the questions to ask yourself are, one, are you going to keep the car for more than five or six years? If so, then you should probably purchase FSD outright because at that point, it will be completely paid for and you can enjoy its functionality at no cost from then on. And as its functionality gets better, the price is only going to increase over time. So locking in a price now is going to be to your benefit. Two, how often are you going to use FSD? If you see yourself using it nearly every day and enjoying the technology, even if you still have to pay close attention to the road, then it may be worth purchasing outright. But if you only see yourself using it here and there when on a road trip, then it is probably worth just paying the subscription fee at those times when you're going to be doing a lot of highway driving. Three, if you don't see yourself trusting FSD to drive you around city streets, how much is it worth to you to have your car automatically change lanes and navigate to off-ramps on the highway? I say this because Tesla's base autopilot that is included for free with all Teslas still does a great job on the highway, but it can only stay in one lane. Every time you want to change lanes or need to move over to take an off-ramp, you must exit autopilot and do that yourself, whereas FSD will change lanes for you automatically to overtake slow cars and get over to off-ramps. I personally think that if you're going to keep your car for a long time, see yourself using FSD fairly often, and most importantly can afford the price, purchasing FSD outright is the way to go. As the outright purchase price increases, the subscription price will also have to increase. So locking in a lower price for yourself will benefit you a lot in the long run. And who knows, Tesla may do yearly subscriptions for FSD instead of monthly subscriptions, removing the possibility of subscribing to FSD for just a single month when you are going on a long road trip. And that wraps up my thoughts on purchasing versus subscribing to Tesla's full self-driving package. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't give it a thumbs down if you disagree with my analysis. That hurts the video and my channel a lot. Just let me know why you agree or disagree in the comments down below, and I'm happy to discuss it further with you. As always, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in the near future. I appreciate you taking the time to watch today, and I will see you back here in the next video.